Hello and welcome everyone to our next Cloud Community Conference. It's great to see so many people joining us today. Is it online, on their screens, or here with us in Berlin? We have a full agenda for today, so let me introduce you to Frank on stage. It's really, really good to be here. Um, thanks for joining this announcement here and joining the next uh, community conference. For me, this is the personal highlight uh, of the year. Um, before I dive into the details of our big announcement that we have today, I want to talk a little bit more about yeah, the challenges that we have in the world, uh, to put it all in a little bit into context, what we are doing here. And um, after that, I will show you all the important things that we do at Nextcloud. But first about the challenges that we have. So the first one is obviously, how can we communicate and collaborate securely and privately over the internet? This is one of the big challenges that we wanted to achieve with Nextcloud. Of course, um, I truly believe that open source is the solution here. Decentralization is a solution and, and other things, but this is a bit one of the big questions and this is why Nextcloud exists in the first place. Then there's the question about digital sovereignty. Can we have that? Can we be in control of our digital lives? Can organizations be in control of their digital destiny? Is this a way to really control it? Are they really completely rely on the goodwill of some big tech companies somewhere else, or is this really the future? I'm, I'm not really sure. So digital sovereignty is something that's really important, and this is what we want to achieve, obviously, with Nextcloud. So what does the um, dependency on these big tech platforms actually mean? Is this a good thing? Should we do that? I really think smaller instances, decentralized instances, open source instances, op um, open source instances are better for everybody. It's like better for the world, it's better for the users, it's better for democracy, and I really think we should not depend on these big centralized tech platforms. Then there's a big question around AI. As you know, AI is rising, it has a lot of useful functionalities, but it also comes with a lot of challenges, um, ethical challenges. And for us as Nextcloud, it was and still is the question, can we use this and can we integrate it, can we leverage this new technology in an ethical way that really helps everybody? Then, of course, a big question around CO2 footprint, climate change. One of the big challenges of our, our, our world nowadays um, and will be for the foreseeable future. So how can we reduce the CO2 footprint from um, IT systems? Nextcloud is one of it and other cloud services too. So how can we actually reduce our bad impact here and that make it worse and worse? Because this is what IT is doing at the moment, unfortunately. So from my perspective, it was always clear that as software developers, we have a responsibility. We cannot just, like, I don't know, do what we want, and um, the effect uh, in the on the world doesn't really matter, right? I really think we have a responsibility. We are building systems. We're releasing software to the world, and this can be done in a good way, in an ethical way, or in a not-so-good way. And I really think we have responsibilities and, and ethical goals here. And we as Nextcloud have constantly discussions what we can do better, how what we should do, what we should not do, um, to summarize our goals and, and ethics, we created this video that is a nice overview. I want to show it to you now. We believe privacy is a fundamental human right and everybody should have access to secure communication free from surveillance. We are building decentralized products as an alternative to centralized platforms. People can choose what they want and where they want it. We believe in open source and open standards. Open source is the only way for users to trust their devices. We value sustainability, protecting people, society and the environment. We believe accessibility is a fundamental human right and technology should be accessible to everyone. The time of our users is very important to us. That's why we do our best to make Nextcloud easy to use. We foster diversity, from innovation to transparency and collaboration. Working with our communities and supporting marginalized people leads to a better result. So I think these are topics, these are things that affect all of us, affects everybody on this planet. But in this release, um, with this announcement, this video, I want to focus a bit on one specific sector, the public sector, governments, because the governments all over the world they have some specific challenges 
Um, can we that want to do digitalization? They want to stay in control. They want to provide good services to their citizens. So they really have specific challenges. Some people think that the solution is to just um, use public cloud services just to store all your data on the other side of the world. I am personally not really sure. I think open source decentralized systems are a lot better. I personally started this project here uh, many years ago because I don't want to live in a world where five big companies control all communication collaboration in the world. So I really think we want to have something better. Government organizations deserve something better. Every person, every human deserves something better. And what is better? Well, first of all, I think that open source is better. It creates transparency. It makes it better available. You can look inside. You can verify if the code is doing what it's supposed to do. So open source is a big, big part of the solution. Digital sovereignty, as I said before, it gives you a control. You can really see um, what you're doing doesn't take away from you. You're in more independent. You can execute your human rights. Government can follow the law like the GDPR. So digital sovereignty is very important. And then, of course, decentralization. Decentralization is an important thing. We don't really want to um, yeah, um, live in a world where everything is centralized in the control of a few um, actors. So I think these are already three important things, but uh, I want to talk specifically about the fourth one now, which is very important strategically for us, and this is the concept of federation. Some of you might not know what this means. Let me explain it to you. For me, it's really one of the key parts to a better, more sustainable yeah, more digital sovereign future. So this is, as you know, the old way of working, right? You have a centralized system, everybody connects to it, um, but some organization sits in the middle, like the spider in the middle of a web. Um, so this is, of course, yeah, not so good. But Nextcloud already is a little bit, bit, a bit better because it is open source, you can self-host it. So people can be in control of their individual destinies. But the challenge is, if you look at this picture here, you see it creates islands, right? You have then lots of different Nextcloud servers and they're all isolated from each other. And then, of course, like it's not so good for collaboration to actually work together. And the solution here is the concept of federation. So with federation, you have lots and lots of different Nextcloud servers, but they can still talk to each other um, in a peer-to-peer -peer way without a central instance. So this is something that is a really important concept for us since many, many years, and we are constantly pushing this forward. The first feature we implemented in the area of federation is federated file sharing. This is something that's already a few years old. It works very easily. You can just in the normal share dialog, if you want to share a file or a folder with someone, you can type in um, the federated sharing ID um, of a person on a different server, and then actually a share process starts and then the folder or the file is shared between different different servers in the peer-to-peer -peer way without a centralized entity. Um, and this is something we did many years ago and this is already a great success and used by a lot of organizations. Then a few years back, we introduced Nextcloud Social. So Nextcloud Social is a way to interact with in a social way with other people. And this is actually done in a way that it also works in a federated way across servers. So you can see messages from people on other servers and people on other servers can see your messages. Um, so this is something um, that is using the ActivityPub standard. And this is something that's um, compatible with Mastodon and, and similar um, um, projects of the Fediverse. So a very nice federated way of yeah, seeing social net uh, network net messages from other people. In the last release, we expanded this concept with federated talk chat messages. So you can now have people in your chat conversation, in your one-on-one -on -one conversations, but also in uh, group chats that are on different servers. So let's say you have like a um, friend of you is using some Nextcloud server as a Raspberry Pi somewhere. You yourself have your own instance. There's someone else from a university, someone from a school, someone from a company. They all have their different Nextcloud servers, but you can be together in one room and talk to each other as if you would be on the same instance, but it's actually federated. And of course, we have a very nice invitation system and we have a security system where you can make sure that you're not getting any spam or something that's really completely secure, but it's a very powerful feature. In this release, I'm really, really happy to say that we expanded our federation concept to video calls. So you can now have video calls with other people that are actually on different servers. You can actually call people on other Nextcloud servers. 
And this is something quite unique and I think very powerful thing. And again, we have, our, of course, our moderation and um, security features, so you don't have to worry. But this is something that is quite unique and for me, a step in the right direction where not one single entity controls all video calls, but it's actually federated. Of course, we are not doing this alone. We are doing this together with other like-minded projects. So this is all built on top of open protocols. For example, um, there's the Open Cloud Mesh protocol, which is used for federated um, file sharing, but also for federated talk. This is a project that is that we are also involved in and we partly co-created it. It's also pushed forward by organizations like CERN. Um, so something that is like cross different vendors and international standard. And um, yeah, everybody can hook in and support the same thing. Very good. Then there's the activity pub standard. This is used for Nextcloud Social. This is for the social interaction. Also something that support many, many years. This is developed by the W3C um, uh, consortium. I was also involved there. So it's a very nice open um, protocol, again, used by Masterton, um, PeerTube, and many other projects of the Fediverse. So very nice open standard. So today I have the pleasure um, to introduce you um, to the next steps. We are talking about three things now. The first is Nextcloud Hub 9, obviously. This is the next big step forward. Then we have a section where we talk about our ecosystem, our platform, our partnerships. Um, this is per for me personally very important because Nextcloud doesn't exist in isolation. We work together with a lot of other organizations and this is something that's just key for us, how we work and how we think. And then the last uh, section it's a quite a big announcement um, of a very innovative new feature, which is specifically important for the public sector, for the government, as I said earlier. But let's sta get started with Nextcloud Hub 9. And with the first innovation, I want to ask my colleague Irini to the stage to show you all about it. Irini. Thank you, Frank. Let's start with the first major improvement in Nextcloud Hub, which is all about design. We spend a lot of time in front of our screens, be it for work, for personal things, but a lot happens in front of a screen. So what's very important for us is that the software should work, it gets out of the way, and it makes us feel fun, uh, good, and familiar. For this release, we made a couple of global design changes that, although relatively small, have a big impact on Nextcloud's user interface. First of all, it is better to not have a feature than to have one that works poorly. So only the most important elements. Automate tasks instead of offering configuration options. When people ask for a setting, identify the root problem and fix that instead. Test across different devices and browsers. Ensure universal access, including compatibility with keyboards and assistive softwares like screen readers. With Hub 9, we are introducing a more streamlined user interface. Our design goal for this release was to give more room to content and makes things more usable. The interface is now more compact, making content more visible while still being accessible. This translates into the following design changes for Hub 9. Here on the dashboard, you can enjoy our new background and you will see we changed button and border radius to take less space. The denser interface is very visible here in Talk, where you can have noticeable more chats and messages visible at any time. And here is our new Nextcloud files. We updated the icons, as you can see, and the menu and sidebar are more compact now. And those breadcrumbs take less space as well. This is the new and improved Nextcloud mail interface. Email accounts, emails, and email headers are all a bit closer together. It is much easier now to read, manage, and write emails in the next cloud mail. Collectives, our knowledge management app, has an improved layout of the pages, making more content visible and structured on the screen. For those of you who prefer to work during the night, 
Nextcloud helps you to reduce eye strain during the late night tasks with an improved dark mode. You can pick your favorite background and then, depending on your operating system setting or personal preference, the dark or light version will be shown. At Nextcloud, we are committed to make collaboration accessible for everyone, with features like Nextcloud shortcuts for seamless navigation, a dyslexia-friendly font for easier reading, and much more. Recently, we also got one of the strictest accessibility certifications, Bitfi 2.0, for Nextcloud Enterprise. Last but not least, the Nextcloud iOS app features an improved layout for a better user experience. We've listened to your feedback and now we are introducing thumbnails for media files, cleaner interface with less irrelevant information, a fresh set of icons, an optimized interface for landscape mode. Searching is now faster. Results appear as you type, no need to press enter anymore. Plus, we've squashed many bugs to give you a better app experience. Here is a short summary of all the design changes in Hub9. What I really like in this release is the improved design overall, which makes using Nextcloud Hub more productive and joyful. Now, let me introduce Simon for the next improvement in Hub9. Thank you, Irene. Let's talk about the core of Nextcloud Hub, which is Nextcloud Files. Nextcloud Files is where your documents, videos, and photos live. Nextcloud Files is a powerful document management system, making it easy to view, access, and share your documents wherever you are. It offers document versioning, templates, and powerful sharing capabilities. One of the new features you will see in Nextcloud Files are the new filters. These filters allow you to filter on a file type, when a file was modified, or which people shared that specific file. There's also a filter on file names in the folders. And here's something a lot of you have been asking for. It is one of the most requested features in Nextcloud. We've added a folder tree view in the sidebar. Now you can navigate through your folders much faster. We've also made some improvements to the grid view in Nextcloud files. Now there's more space for those longer file names, making it easier to see everything at a glance. I want to start with the basics. In Nextcloud, you upload, download, and access your files. To add files, you start with the plus menu. You see a few new things. First, you can now upload folders as well as just files. Second, there's the option to do a file request, which means you can ask people to send you a file. Let's have a look what that looks like. In this dialog, you can then enter a subject line for your file request, choose a folder where the files that you receive should go, and add a little note for the recipient. You can also set things like expiration date and password for your file request. Now you are ready to share the link for your file request and if needed, you can also share via a mail address. The recipient who opens a mail or clicks the link you've sent them will be asked to enter the name before uploading. Upon submitting your name, you have the option to upload or drop your files. It shows that the description you gave to this file request. You can see all your file requests under the sharing section on the left sidebar. That way, you can conveniently access them to check on any uploads. When working with other users, you want to know when files or folders are changed or when somebody gave a comment on them. This helps you to stay up to date. Nextcloud Files offers you to set up your notifications. For each action, you can choose to get push notifications on your mobile device and browser or through an email. With this release, you can get notified when someone downloads your shared file or when some button uploads the file you've requested. Organizations often collaborate with people outside the organization, like for example consultants, vendors, or other government agencies. Nextcloud Files makes collaborating easy with the guest user feature, which gives access only to the files and folders they need. 
But sometimes consultants or contractors switch jobs and join the city or state government as employees. At that point, you'd like to move those guest accounts over to real accounts and with help 9, this is super easy. Next up, 9 brings enhancements to group folders, a popular collaboration feature which allows administrators to create shared folders, grant access to specific groups, manage write and sharing permissions, and set quotas. Now you can easily manage access control list or ACL, permissions for group folders with enhanced feedback and the ability to view both inherited and direct permissions. There are many more improvements in next of files. For example, if you're in an environment where multiple operating systems are used, you will appreciate that the server can now enforce file names that won't cause issues on Windows. My favorite feature would be the file requests for uploads in Hub9. I'd like to shortly talk about federation. So far, you've seen our work on Nextcloud files, but there's more work behind the scenes as well as, of course, work on our clients. But before that, I want to talk about a subject Frank brought up in his introduction, Federation. Federation basically solves our dependence on big central services. We see a clear need for a self-hosted alternative. You can connect multiple Nextcloud servers and have them collaborate together. This also ensures full digital sovereignty by communicating and collaborating in a decentralized manner. There's no need for a third party to control all. The data always resides on the original server. With federated sharing, you can define the permissions for each federated folder or file share. In the sharing settings, you can configure where shared files and folders should reside on your Nextcloud instance. For administrators, we provide a range of options to fine-tune federated cloud sharing, allowing you to customize, but if needed, you also have the option to disable it entirely. One thing every single one of our customers cares about deeply is keeping their data secure. We work on security with every release. Today, we have some key improvements I want to talk about. If you use physical security keys for passwordless authentication in Nextcloud, you'll be pleased to know that you can now add a PIN for extra security. This feature, known as user verification, ensures that even if someone else has your security key, they can't access your Nextcloud account without your PIN. Developed by our community, this enhancement in Hub9 adds an important layer of protection to keep your account secure. In Hub9, we also expanded our admin delegation feature to user management, so the system admin can give the right to add and remove users to others without immediately giving them full admin rights. Sometimes you need an extra layer of security by disabling admin access in certain locations or networks without completely blocking access to your platform. In Hub9, we've introduced a more fine-tuned approach, allowing you to restrict admin access to trusted IP addresses or ranges. Outside of these locations, admin actions and settings will be unavailable to users. Nextcloud Hub supports multiple encryption technologies. Each layer of encryption targets different threats. For example, server-side encryption can protect data on disk at rest in case server gets stolen, for example. End-to-end -end encryption protects from compromised and malicious servers while TLS encryption protects data going from server to client and vice versa. Next.hub9, end-to-end encryption is now compatible with server-side encryption, so you can enable both on the same server. As both are complementary, this is a nice step forwards securing your data. To help you protect sensitive data, Nextcloud has the ability to extract metadata from files to set certain tags to help you classify documents. In Hub9, We've enhanced metadata extraction capabilities to include PDF files. You can now automatically scan and tag PDF documents based on their content, such as identifying credit card details to set confidential tag. With these tags, you can easily manage and protect critical data across the organization. Moreover, we introduced support for Azure Information Protection file tags, so documents that contain such a metadata can be handled properly. I also have some news about our clients. Next to our web interface, many people use our desktop and mobile clients. These provide easy and reliable file sync across devices, 
which allows you to work locally without a network connection. With Hub9, we added new release channels to our desktop client and enabled new security settings. We also made some improvements in the interface, bringing it closer to the native UI and improved handy multi-monitor setups, especially on macOS. In our mobile apps, we worked on the Android Sync capabilities and made new design improvements for iOS. One of the noteworthy improvements is a two-way sync feature in the Android client. With two-way sync enabled for a folder, it will be up to date at all times. Files added or updated in the cloud automatically sync to your device and vice versa. This feature works with internal folders, meaning the ones you create in Nextcloud. Here's a summary of all the features available in the Nextcloud files clients. And since I'm involved in design, my favorite feature would be the UI redesign for desktop app that makes it really look more native. For the next major improvement, I want to ask Anna to the stage. Now to Nextcloud Groupware improvements. Nextcloud Groupware integrates calendar, contacts, mail, and other productivity features to help get teams get their work done faster, easier, and on your terms. Let's discover what's new in each app starting with mail. Hub9 brings lots of improvements to the Nextcloud Mail app, adding to security, usability, and navigation. Getting a ton of email, in addition to searching your mailbox, you can now use advanced filters to organize your email. They make handling a lot of mail much, much easier. We built a nice filtering tool into Nextcloud Mail, which can handle a ton of conditions, such as subject line, sender, or tags you can apply actions to automate repetitive tasks. For example, flagging certain messages is important or moving newsletters into a special folder. This new feature is based on Civ and makes managing your mailbox a breeze. That Civ thing, a term you've probably never heard of, means the filtering of the messages will take place on the server, not in your client. So every mail client will benefit. In Nextcloud Mail, we keep exploring more uses for intelligent language processing, leading us to our next feature. For Hub9, the integrated smart assistant can analyze your messages to decide if you need to follow up. If the AI finds follow-up messages, it will place them in the follow-up section to remind you. Hopefully, this will help you ensure that you don't miss any important emails. Another new feature in Nextcloud Mail is phishing detection. Phishing has become a huge threat and major cost factor in recent years. To protect you, Nextcloud Mail will show you if a sender seems suspicious and will allow you to take action either way. It cross-checks with your contacts and then you can either block them or add them to the trusted sender list. We have partnered with two open source companies, Dovecot and Stalwart, and we are introducing two new recommended mail servers that we make sure integrate well in Nextcloud Mail. Dovecot is a full service email platform that is secure, lightweight, and easy to configure. With an ability to handle large numbers of mailboxes and users and a very efficient resource usage, it is a popular choice for managing email on a server. It also has a simple modular file system that can easily be customized. Dovecut is trusted by the world's leading telecommunications companies, ISPs, and hosting providers. The Stalwart Mail Server is a modern, high-performance email, SMTP, and MTA solution that is robust and scalable. It is designed to be lightweight and secure, and built with a focus on speed, simplicity, and modern features. The Stalwart Mail Server includes several components, including vital security tools, like message authentication and transport security, and advanced spam and phishing detection technology. Enterprise customers can optionally get a Dovecot Pro subscription from Open Exchange or the Stalwart Enterprise Mail Server with their Nextcloud Enterprise product. A feature heavily used in large organizations is encryption for email, which we've introduced in our last release. But there is another widely used encryption method for email, PGP. For this, we have worked with Mailvelope. Mailvelope is a browser-based plugin that supports end-to-end -end encryption of email using OpenPGP. It allows users to encrypt, decrypt, sign, and verify emails directly within their webmail interface. 
It also offers attachment encryption tools and key management features. We've worked together with the team behind Mavelope to ensure it works reliably and is suitable to be the recommended solution for safe communication and easy encryption in Nextcloud Mail. We also introduced a simplified domain registration feature that makes onboarding easier. You can authorize a domain by just clicking a button. For customers, we worked with Mailvelope to offer them an enterprise solution that works great with Nextcloud Enterprise. If you want to view a mail outside the Nextcloud Mail app, you can now do so with the Email Viewer app. This will allow you to preview saved emails from anywhere within Nextcloud Hub. Other improvements coming to the Nextcloud Mail and Hub 9 are Quick Search, Simplified Domain Registration, Improved Priority Inbox, Email Viewing in Files, Printing, Follow-up Reminders, and APIs for Reading and Sending Messages. Since I built the API, I have to say, it is my favorite. Next up is Nextcloud Calendar. We've introduced a ton of features to help you manage your busy day. Let's take a look at some of them. We've improved the calendar overview for you. It is now super easy to see if a calendar belongs to you or was shared with you or was created by an app like Nextcloud Deck. We also moved the disabled calendars to a new section called Hidden. When creating an event, we can now check the availability of the room or resource we would like to use. Used together with our availability checking makes meeting and planning much easier. Nextcloud Calendar allows you to create talk rooms when creating an event. We've expanded on this in the creation and now Nextcloud Talk will show you when this new event takes place. This nifty little feature is especially useful when you have weekly meetings. It serves as an, as an easy reminder and a visual cue when people of this room are talking again. There's tons of improvements in Nextcloud Calendar. My favorite has to be the new section on the sidebar. Nextcloud Contact is fully integrated in all areas of Nextcloud Hub. We improved the performance of the Contacts app and have improved on some core features. So let's have a look. Nextcloud Contact is more than just an address book. It is your access point to shared resources, sharing presets for your teams, and even the interactive company chart where you can easily find the right person for collaboration, support, or any specific task. Let's take a look at the group actions in Nextcloud Contacts. You can now easily rename and delete groups from the group menu, but you can also send emails using a group action. Lastly, there is now biography support in Nextcloud Contacts. In Nextcloud Hub, going on vacation or taking a long commute is as smooth as ever. You can set an out of office status to update your absence automatically across the platform with an autoresponder in Nextcloud Mail and a calendar event for your dates. Customize a short message to notify everyone of your absence and use the long description for detailed information about your tasks and vacation details. Your status is carried over to other parts of Nextcloud Hub. In the out of office banner, shown in the personal chats in Nextcloud Talk. In your email autoresponder. In your calendar when others want to book a meeting with you. With Nextcloud Hub 9, you can set another user as a designated replacement. This information will be visible to others with your status, ensuring smooth communication while you're away. Next up is Nextcloud Deck. Nextcloud Deck is a Kanban tool that helps teams organize tasks using boards and cards. It seamlessly integrates with Nextcloud Hub, allowing easy collaboration, task management, linking, and versioning. Nextcloud allows you to manage tasks in cards, attach relevant documents within those cards, and when you want, you can apply some fancy card previews. Each board can be easily managed and recycled, and you can export your Kanban board into a spreadsheet format in case you need to use project data elsewhere. In your cards, you can use rich text formatting, links to other locations, or use the Smart Picker to do any linking, like a table or a collector's article. Nextcloud Deck is perfect for managing your projects efficiently. Here you have it as a summary of what's coming with Nextcloud Grouper Hub 9. And my personal personal favorite is the phishing email detection. It is designed to help protect you from those pesky phishing emails. With that, 
I would like to ask Michael to the stage. Thank you so much, Anna. And I'm really looking forward to trying some of those things out. Wow, so much going on. So, for my part, let's look briefly at Nextcloud Office, which is based on Collabor Online in Nextcloud Hub 9. Now, perhaps you haven't played with it, so let me tell you a bit about what it is. Uh, Nextcloud Office provides an online, real-time collaborative editing suite. It's highly interoperable, so you can get all of your government documents, uh, spreadsheets, and presentations imported, and it runs in all modern browsers, so very easy to deploy. And you can work collaboratively with your team, and you can see what everyone else is doing while you, you edit. Uh, and perhaps while you do that during your Nextcloud Talk video meetings as well, so very easy to collaborate and work together. Of course, you can collaborate on documents. That's, that's very smooth. And uh, maybe someone's editing some meeting minutes in your meeting, and you know the flow is going well. And, and maybe you're tired. You're focused on something else. And so it's really great to be able to then follow uh, the editor and make sure that when your name is called, you'll be where the action is happening in the document. Uh, and, and you can immediately re-engage and, and help uh, provide value in the meeting. Obviously, uh, we do spreadsheets as well, so you can model, plan, project, budget, collaboratively in real time uh, with all the advanced formulas and functions you expect, conditional formatting to highlight the key data, and uh, all sorts of formulas, particularly like this contextual tooltip feature we've added in the recent uh, version. So as you type your formula very easily in line, you can see what all of those parameters are supposed to be and get them right. Obviously, we have presentations as well, so rich media support, images, videos, and charts, showing all of that data, persuading and winning over uh, your audience uh, with slight transitions and animations to you know, make it even more rich. Nextcloud Office also provides wonderful integration with Nextcloud and the rest of the suite uh, and adds huge value with that. So you have an easy to access side pane on the right there, and you can see the activity on the document. You can see comments, interactions, what other people have been thinking and doing around the document. Obviously, you can pull new people in. You can share easily there uh, with uh, options and various permissions for new users. And then, of course, version control to see what's been happening uh, very easy and when. We have Smart Picker integration, and the Smart Picker is a great tool that allows AI, communication features, and all sorts of other content to be brought and picked directly into your document. Um, so easily to insert links to other documents or even elements of other documents, uh, to link documents together. You can generate content there, new images. It's just fantastic. Or, or even just connect with other Nextcloud apps like Deck or Mail. Uh, and that really streamlines your workflow and makes it easy to build documents that enrich other people's understanding. Obviously, we can export to all manner of formats. Uh, we, we love to do that, particularly to our, our Microsoft uh, using friends. Uh, we're, we're excellent at that. Um, but one of the things we really love is PDF. So we can provide very powerful hybrid PDFs that actually embed the original document inside the PDF. So if you want to load the full fidelity version, you can, you can get it uh, as it as it was intended. Uh, but of course, people without that can just use a PDF viewer. Tagged PDFs are, of course, really important, uh, and PDF universal accessibility for, for citizens that want to be able to understand and get good quality documents and structure and, and detail around those documents, as they should uh, for the impaired uh, PDF 1.7 support. And that makes exporting just really easy and, and rich and powerful. There's another use case we really want to sort out, which is creating templates and filling forms and making sure that people get all the fields right and so on. And so being able to create multiple documents from a central database or template is really, really key. Now, of course, there's an easy UI so that anyone can create a template. It's just uh, very, very simple. There's a nice toolbar there. Uh, you can set your file up and then you can just drop it in the next cloud templates folder. Really easy to deploy. And then, of course, as you create a template, that template will appear as an option and will interrogate the template and get those uh, fields out of it and provide a UI that lets you fill those out and uh, make a document that then has all of those uh, in it. And so it's not only creating documents uh, for this, but also being able to extract data out of it. So we have a new API there that allows you to uh, interrogate any document with fields and grab data out of that. Um, so lots of useful form-filling goodness uh, and API to allow simple scripting uh, to generate documents and uh, let them uh, run riot with all sorts of useful information inside them. And you can see that flow happening there. Um, some, some pretty exciting stuff and really, really easy to use. 
Of course, in addition to text and, and form fields, dates, and, and so on, um, it's often really cool to enrich your document with, with a pretty chart. You know, ah, graphic can show so much information. So we have a nice API to allow you also to uh, script charts. You know, maybe it's your successes in, uh, in a project plan or, or, or something like that, uh, whatever it is, so that you can then automatically generate those uh, for, for many people with a, with a small script. When it comes to setting up and configuring Nextcloud Office, uh, we've added some functionality that if you're an administrator, will, will show up in your toolbar. So you can just check that you've got it as optimal as you can. And that can really simplify getting a large deployment right, uh, secure, and so on. And all of that links into the SDK uh, to make it easier to find the documentation and read that. So when it comes to presentations, we've been doing some uh, great work here. One of the things we like about Nextcloud Office is making a no compromise Office productivity suite that brings a full feature app into the browser. And in order to enrich our slideshows, we really think it's great to have 3D transitions between slides. So we've done a whole load of work to try and make this uh, work beautifully in the browser. And we now, for the first time, have WebGL support. So you can see pretty transitions happening in your browser uh, everywhere from any device. Of course, you have to support uh, WebGL in your browser, but that's, that's most of them. So we're pre pleased to see that. And of course, at the same time, we've made presentations actually much faster. So quicker to open large slide decks, we can get going uh, snappily, and I think 16 times faster. So if you have a large uh, presentation for a department or you know, a seminar or perhaps a teacher in a classroom, you, know, you can get going quickly and keep people's attention. So security-wise, we've done a whole lot of work to improve some corner cases where people wouldn't give us the permissions we need to secure your documents nicely. So we now use rootless containers and Linux namespaces. And so we can use these features to encapsulate your documents really securely on, on things like OpenShift and, and those other platforms where, ironically, not having enough permissions meant that we couldn't do as good a job of uh, securing your documents. So now we can. And that's, that's, that's really great. So we're doing that out of the box now uh, wherever we can. Another security feature has been this investment by the BSI uh, alongside Allotropia coming from the LibreOffice core community to add wholesome encryption. Uh, so just a better way to encrypt the whole ODF document instead of individual streams. Uh, securing that and improving the algorithms there, uh, better AES GCM encryption, argon to key derivation functions, all sorts of good technical details. It's just better. Uh, interoperability is something we're constantly working to improve. Uh, there's just a few highlights here. We're bundling some more metric compatible fonts to make things a layout uh, more similarly. Uh, and you can see the impact there of sort of layout changes with improvements in smart justification coming from uh, LibreOffice Upstream. Again, a community contribution we much appreciate from Laszlo Nemeth. And uh, new Excel compatible functions as well. So like filter, sort, sort by, and many others. So in summary, uh, there are a whole load of things here in this feature. Uh, one feature I didn't mention I'd love to pull out is some feedback from Nextcloud highlighted a, a Firefox-related performance issue. And we've just done some great work to speed up that browser-specific uh, performance problem there. And also, while I'm here, accessibility. So just lots and lots of improvements across the suite, adding more uh, context, labels, relations to make everything better. And that's Nextcloud Office. So next, I'd love to welcome Christina to the stage to talk about Nextcloud Talk. Thank you, Michael. Now, let's dive into Nextcloud Talk. Um, we'll start with the key features uh, in Nextcloud Talk and then have a look at the big improvements um, and new features in Hub9. So what is Nextcloud Talk? Um, Nextcloud Talk is a unique tool for chatting, video conferencing, webinar streaming, um, and even remote learning. It facilitates the discussions, running polls, um, sharing documents and media, while streaming li live content uh, with an advanced presential tool set. Um, Nextcloud Talk keeps your audience engaged um, with reactions, um, hand raising, and other interactive tools. Need to wrap up a call? Just ask AI to summarize your chat discussion or transcribe the recording. Of course, it's local and privacy first. Nextcloud Talk is often used for webinars and large conferences. Um, to support this, um, it offers a series of moderation tools um, or moderation features um, so you can manage and maintain a safe um, and healthy environment um, with Hub9. Uh, you can also now ban uh, users permanently from, from a chat. 
We introduced a few improvements in talk, um, like making it easier to find a smart speaker um, to insert all kinds of content, like uh, links or um, images. You can now also configure uh, call notifications to play on a second speaker for um, added convenience. We also worked on the mobile apps for Nextcloud Talk. They have all the features we love and use in the web version of Talk. Um, in this release, we've also improved the offline functionality. Um, now, even with a poor network connection, um, you can still view chats and reply to messages, which will be sent once you're back online. We're ahead of the curve, even when it means embracing innovative technology. With this mindset, we've developed an Apple Vision Pro app for Nextcloud, allowing you to experience your meetings in a fully immersive virtual environment. It means um, you can open the Nextcloud Talk um, app on the Vision Pro and organize there your calls, um, you know, um, participate in conversations, placing the window in your environment whenever you like. And we'll bring this also to other platforms. So stay tuned. Just like everything in Nextcode Hub, Nextcode Talk is highly scalable, serving large group, um, groups of concurrent users uh, with chatting, attending webinars, and participating in calls at the same time. Um, and what if you are a governmental um, agency? You likely prefer to chat with people in one place um, without creating a new account every time. So we made it possible um, even across separate uh, Nextcloud hubs. Frank already mentioned um, earlier in our presentation uh, the Federation and we've seen how it works um, in Nextcloud files. And now let's have a look um, on how um, it works in Nextcloud Talk. You can count on Talk to keep decentralized teams connected, uh, whether you're collaborating with regional affiliates across uh, company branches on different continents or even partners who use Nextcloud. Um, with Federation, um, people from, for example, a um, governmental um, agency can jo join group chats on another server using their federated ID, uh, enabling them to chat um, use the familiar tools um, like user mentions, chat commands, and um, even polls. So a federated setup is ideal uh, for collaborating between companies while ensuring that your data stays you know, private and secure within um, the company's network. With Nextcloud Hub, um, we bring you federated calls. This feature enables audio and video meetings um, among people from different clouds. Each user can access a call from their own web or mobile interface using their own account. So no guest users or public links, just a seamless experience. It feels just like a regular cloud meeting platform, doesn't it? But that's the beauty of Federation. It gives you uh, that familiar experience while still being decentralized and keeping things local. Um, our Federation is built on existing standards. The Open Cloud Mesh API is an open standard we collaborated on uh, with multiple organizations, among others, uh, the Research Institute CERN. We believe Federation is crucial for the future of the internet and for Nextcloud too. That's why we've created this video that explains what Federation is um, and how it aligns with what we do um, here at Nextcloud. The creators of the internet expected that each user would have their own server, hosting their own homepage and email. The internet would thus be fully decentralized. Forward some 40 years, most users put their data at one of a few tech giants dominating the internet. They erected walls so you cannot chat from Facebook Messenger to Apple Messages or share files between Dropbox and OneDrive. Nextcloud is fundamentally designed to put users in control over their data, like the original internet. But that does not mean users are disconnected from each other. At Nextcloud, we believe federation and decentralization are key to the future of an internet that's privacy-respecting, sovereign, and built with digital well-being in mind. For that reason, federated features have been available since the very first version of Nextcloud in 2016. 
Federation enables you to connect your own private NextCloud with other NextCloud servers around the world while maintaining control of your data. Share files throughout NextCloud Hub using federated cloud sharing. This enables you to send files between NextCloud servers from one user to another anywhere in the world using their federated cloud ID. Sharing files with another user is similar to sending an email, and the addresses look the same too. With email, you can send a message to any user of any service, whether hosted at a service like Gmail or Hotmail, or self-hosted mail with username, at, followed by their domain. This is familiar throughout all decentralized technologies. To share a file with a friend or colleague on another NextCloud instance, enter their federated cloud ID, their username at their server address. Similar to sharing with users on your own NextCloud, just with an extra address at the end. This allows data to be kept on the original NextCloud server and shared as needed with users on a different NextCloud server anywhere in the world. Besides sharing files between servers, you can also invite users from other servers to chats and calls in NextCloud Talk. With NextCloud Talks Federation, users from two or more organizations can collaborate using their own NextCloud Hub interface from one server to another seamlessly through video calling and chat features. You can then chat and have video calls, and every participant can use the web interface, desktop, or mobile app from their own account and their own server. There is no need to hand out guest accounts or use public links, and the experience for users is entirely seamless. A federated chat shows up in the chat list and you get notified of new messages, just like if a chat was on your own server. You can mention users, do a poll, or share files in the chat to work on together. Federation can be controlled in multiple ways, both by users and admins, giving you exactly the federation you want. For users, you can find your federated cloud ID in your NextCloud Hub sharing settings. Easy. Share this with friends and colleagues when communicating and sharing files with other NextClouders. For admins, the federated sharing settings give granular control over federated sharing permissions, whether federation is enabled or disabled, and more. Admins can also define trusted servers here allowing these trusted servers to exchange account directories, facilitating federated activities even further by auto-completing external accounts throughout NextCloud Hub. As always with NextCloud, you're in control of your data, defining exactly the level of privacy you desire. These days, a few tech giants hoard gargantuan amounts of personal data, straying away from the original intention of what the internet could have become. To self-host your data and collaborate on your own terms, you can achieve this today when you choose NextCloud. Choose regaining control over your data. Stop following the rules of the big tech companies and instead join us in our belief that federation and decentralization are key to the future of an internet that respects your privacy. And here you have all the new features of NextCloud Talk um, summarized. Um, my favorite is Apple Vision Pro app. This brings your meetings um, to an entire um, a new experience. For the improvement number nine, we are introducing a new app called NextCloud Whiteboard. This is a canvas-like whiteboard for sketching, um, planning, and brainstorming that integrates well with your apps in NextCloud Hub. Whether you're brainstorming ideas, planning projects, or collaborating with your team, Whiteboard offers an intuitive and interactive space to bring your ideas to life. NextCloud Whiteboard is easy to use and scales along with your NextCloud environment, ready to become your team's daily collaboration tool. Um, start a new Whiteboard from um, the creation menu in NextCloud files, like any other file, um, or use the plus icon if you're using NextCloud Talk to create a um, whiteboard within your call or chat. You can draw with custom colors, strokes, presets. You can add stickers and shapes. You can use blocks and arrows and even add your own images. You can present your ideas and thoughts to others using the laser point feature. 
Nextcloud Whiteboard can be adjusted to your own personal preferences with customization options. Um, and we also support dark and light mode. When you build something worth keeping, of course, you can export it um, as an image or a PDF. You can draw a simple sketch um, or notes for your next team sync or visualize an entire com complex project. With an infinite canvas, um, you have all the space you need to discuss ideas um, and you can go as far as you want them to. You can invite others to participate um, to, um, to your canvas or whiteboard um, via Nextcloud files um, with your team or with external users, um, even if they don't have a Nextcloud account. Let's have a look at the whiteboard apps in action in this little video. The Nextcloud Whiteboard is your collaborative real-time sketching tool, allowing you to create beautiful hand-drawn stylistic diagrams, project plans, brainstorm notes, and more with your friends and colleagues. Your whiteboards are stored in an open format and no data leaks beyond your server, so your creations will always be yours. Complement your conversations and video calls in talk by creating a new whiteboard from the plus icon. You can even design your drawings and diagrams immediately from within a call. Thanks to support for instant collaboration, your friends and colleagues can join you and create and brainstorm together. Nextcloud Whiteboard is super easy to use. It offers all needed tools to create and customize shapes, add text, highlight relationships with customizable arrows, and much more. Need to present your ideas? Nextcloud Whiteboard makes this easy too. Use the integrated laser pointer to guide others through your plans for world domination. Transition to a new whiteboard being screen shared from within a talk conversation with several participants. Use the laser pointer function to make some highlights, circle elements, point to two related items, etc. Like you're giving a presentation and want to bring attention to a point or two. Creating whiteboards and Nextcloud files is just as easy as creating any new file or folder. The whiteboard's built-in templates give you a great starting point. From there, you can easily share your creation with a colleague or with an external party. Open the sidebar from the three-dot menu and enter a name or email. You can also create a public link you can share with anyone, even if they don't have an account. Read only if you want, or you can invite them to share their ideas too. The Nextcloud Whiteboard's perfect balance of customization and templating is your new collaborative brainstorming super tool. Impress your colleagues with your creativity, share your ideas clearly, and take your collaboration to the next level with Nextcloud Whiteboard. All right, and here is the quick summary of the whiteboard features. Um, you can see all the, uh, the, new, the features we brought um, on the slide. And my favorite is um, using the different shapes. Um, so you can add or have the variety for different designs, for example. Um, and for the next improvement, I'd like to hand over to Marcel. Nextcloud has invested in artificial intelligence over many years now, and I will give an overview on the current status and the most recent updates. Since the beginning, we wanted to offer AI to make your life easier, but we also want to be transparent about the downsides. Therefore, stick to our ethical AI rating system to help you decide which AI features are right for you. We give each AI integration a score, red, orange, yellow, or green. This is based on three factors that address some of the key concerns with AI. First is the software open source. That allows you to adapt the training, perhaps to fix bias or optimize energy usage. Second is the model freely available that allows you to run it wherever you want, including your own data center, and your data doesn't leak. Third is the training data freely available in that way, you can look for bias and other issues and retrain the model to your liking. We not only provide transparency, but also choice. We've taken a different approach from others in the industry 
and want you to have a choice between the various AI options. We ensure that for all features like translations, text processing or dictation, you have multiple options with on-premise and remote choices. In this way, make it possible to use remote AI service like OpenAI, DeepL or DALL-E in comparison to your local on-prem systems. AI features and machine learning have become an integral part of Nextcloud since several releases. For example, we have text and image generation tools that don't send your prompts to third parties and face an object recognition that doesn't share your photos. Our smart inbox and mail is trained on your data on your server and call transcripts are generated locally as well. These are just some examples where AI is already for working for you in the background. Let's dive a little deeper into the Nextcloud Assistant. As of Hub 6, we introduced you to the Nextcloud Assistant, the industry first AI assistant hosted completely on your own server. This is the tool to make your AI features available, easily available from everywhere in Nextcloud Hub. It's based on a large language model, it's 100% open source, and it can fully run on-premise, so no data is sent to third parties. These are several features available on demand, like text generation, summarization, dictation, and translation for text. On the other hand, the assistant is deeply integrated into several apps itself. For example, the language model understands your emails and should suggest you smart replies to quickly react to them. Or it will pre-fill a follow-up appointment with tasks and topics from the email text. Additionally, the assistant can summarize whole email threads to save you a lot of time when coming back to work. Nextcloud Assistant is also available on your mobile via the Nextcloud app. Just open the Nextcloud app, access the assistant, and the answers can be copied and pasted into other apps. And there is more. The Nextcloud Assistant can answer questions about your own documents and use previous content to write complex documents for you. Which brings me to two existing features of Nextcloud Assistant that I want to focus on in more detail. First, let's have a look at Context Write within the Nextcloud Assistant. Context Write was added to Nextcloud Assistant in Hub 8 and can rewrite any text for you based on provided source material. Imagine you have to write a report about the process on environmental efforts in your organization. Simply schedule a meeting with people to get input on the report. If you record the meeting, Nextcloud Assistant can provide you with the transcripts. In the Assistant, you then give the environmental report from another company as example, given as input to the meeting notes transcription, and the Assistant writes a complete report based on the notes in the same style that the other report was. While Context Write can write text for you, Context Chat allows you to ask questions about document and your data within your Nextcloud. Context Chat will index all your files and learn from other apps like Mail, Calendar, DAC, and Talk. Here, we ask the assistant to create a summary of an internal process for organizing an event, which is documented in the files stored in Nextcloud. Nextcloud Context Chat in the mail allows you to ask questions about your email, like a summary of all the information requests you received this week from a certain team member. Or with the Nextcloud Talk, you want to share a company policy or process, like asking for the vacation request process. But the Context Chat is not only available in standard apps. One example is Analytics and an app for data processing and visualization developed by Nextcloud Community. It means that you can ask Nextcloud Assistant about data from the Analytics app. For example, you can ask about statistical data of your solar panels or you ask for the current sales data. And if you have the relevant data available, the Assistant will give you the overview you are looking for. All features of Nextcloud Assistant are dependent on a strong and stable backend. In this area, we introduce further improvements. The first area is the Enhanced Translation app that is now available within the Nextcloud Assistant window. 
Now, your translation options are virtually limitless. The app can detect, read, and translate over 400 languages by using the Modelart 400 model. We made it possible to use Translate as a so-called X app, so you can run it on a separate server and it doesn't bug the performance of your core. And it can now also run on CPU and GPU infrastructures. Additionally, Assistant added support for Llama 3. The next level Assistant supports many underlying large language models, and we always work to expand this list. For this release, we added support for the latest version of Llama 3. And as previously shown, we offer you the choice to combine different options depending on your requirements. The next even bigger improvement is our assistant to our assistant was asked by many customers. Today, we are introducing real chat UI. This means the large language model remembers the conversation and thus you can follow up on previous questions and continue with the discussion. Finally, we have created a new API to make it faster to develop new AI features in the future and improve performance and scaling. It makes the responses of the assistant faster regardless of the user's infrastructure by elim eliminating delays on the next lot side. So it allows for near instant responses on the chat UI if there is a fast backend available. To summarize this part for the next cloud assistant, we introduce new language model, enhance the performance, and introduce our new chat UI. Next, I would like to talk about Nextcloud tables. If you want to manage data across documents, Nextcloud tables is your go-to tool for handling structured data. It lets you track all kinds of information, and what's really useful is you can link this data directly to other Nextcloud resources, like talk rooms or deck cards, keeping everything connected in one place. Plus, Nextcloud Tables is a no-code app, so you can create business applications easily without needing any programming skills. And with our latest release, you can now bundle these tables into a new app and make it available from the top menu bar in the Nextcloud Hub, making it super easy to access and use them wherever you need them. And then with Hub9, we added the user group a user and group column type, so you can, for example, design uh, a table to assign tasks to colleagues or a team right out of your table. Next is the feature to export a schema of a table. Schema means you can export the structure without the table and import it uh, in, a, in a later stage. This is useful for building table environments on a test system and then deploying to a production once ready. It can also be used to have templates of tables that can be reused with your organization if certain structures are used more often in the future. To sum up our enhancement for tables, we introduced the new user group column, we had a lot of performance improvements in the background, and we improved and enhanced our import and export capabilities. Now I want to hand over to Jules. So, I am going to talk about performance and scaling. Now, performance is not only of benefit to you as an end user or as an administrator of a Nexat server, but it also helps our planet. Using less resources lowers the CO2 emissions caused by the nearly 500,000 Nexat servers on the internet. Now, faster can mean a few different things. First, of course, is the end user experience. When loading an app in your browser or when you're using it, you have to wait and you don't want to wait. So, I mean, loading less would reduce your wait. So our developers worked on a tool that puts together the JavaScript in a way that the file sizes get smaller. And therefore, your loading time can get up to five times less when checking out Nexad apps. So sometimes you can make things fast by just not doing some things, like changing the code to not set up the file system when the guest accesses a public link, or by simplifying queries down to access sharing information, like that was done in DEC for this release. Another change we did was to make loading data smarter. For example, in the Tables app, where you import or edit a very big table, we load data incrementally to avoid long waiting times. 
And sometimes you need a much bigger architectural change to improve performance. In 2021, we introduced our high-performance backend for files. We designed the high-performance backend after we saw that at the TU Berlin, the clients, both web and mobile, were sending over 16,000 requests every minute to the servers, simply to check in to see if there had been any changes or any notifications. Now, this accounted for over two-thirds of the network traffic. And the high-performance backend replaces these checks by simply keeping a connection open, hugely reducing the load these checks cause on the network by up to 90%. Now, the high-performance backend reduces your network traffic significantly, but it has another benefit. Instant notifications. Say you're in a call. Uh, you want to, of course, get a notification right away, and this is what the high-performance backend makes possible. Now, over the last few months, our engineers also added support for the high-performance backend to Nexo Text. Now, Nexo Text is a real-time collaborative editor. You use it to work together with other people on notes or, you know, brainstorm session, etc. And it uses a polling mechanism to send data between the clients. Now, using the high-performance backend, this is not only a lot faster, it also reduces the load on the server by up to 90%. So those improvements, they benefit you as a user directly and also lower the load a bit on the server. But we did more to lower loads on the server. For example, Nexo Text now also reduces the speed at which it updates text in an open document when the user has no editing rights. It's less work that way and the impact is negligible. We also made Context Chat smarter, the feature that Marcel talked about earlier by handling the indexing of files as well as the removal of them from the index in a way that uses less resource. Now the second major thing we did for the server is to speed up the update process. This could on large systems really take quite a while and we moved some steps out of the update process into cron and eliminated some other steps. We also created a tool for an admin to get information about the database change that will be needed for an upgrade which then gives the administrator a rough way to estimate how long the update might take. Now, you wonder, okay, so what was the impact of these changes? Now, we tested this on a very large system, and it took two hours to do an update. So that means two hours of dine time. Now, after the changes, this went down to five minutes. So the update time went down by over 95%. Now, of course, not all updates will be impacted this much, but it's certainly promising for administrators running really large instances. Now we're covered how Nexout is snappier for users, how it reduces the load on the server, update faster, but there's a whole other side to performance and that is scalability. Now Nexout already scales from very small devices like a Raspberry Pi all the way up to big Kubernetes setups that can handle millions of users, like for example done at Magenta Cloud from Deutsche Telekom here in Germany. Now sometimes you want to handle even more users. And for that, we have our unique global scale architecture. It allows tens of millions of users on the Nexat service by running distributed over several data centers that can even be on different continents. One example of such a setup is the Clara Drive service of America Mobile. This service is designed for over 20 million users, distributed in four different hosting centers in Central and South America, and they're doing this using Nexat global scale. Now, we always work to improve scalability even more. And, well, with this release, we've been working further on database sharding. That's something we started on last time. Database sharding means that the Nexo database can be split up in several smaller databases to distribute the load between different servers. We introduced the base for sharding in the previous release and build upon it to allow sharding now to work for most use cases. Another huge architectural improvement that we did was improving the read after write behavior of the database. Now, next slide required synchronous replication, which limits the number of database cluster nodes to four. We now support an unlimited number of read nodes that are using asynchronous replication. This improvement, together with database sharding, moves the scalability of Nexa to a next level, supporting up to 10 times more users for a single cluster. So, concluding. We improve performance all the way up and down the stack. We shorten the load times of apps by reducing their size. We made Nexo text more responsive using the high-performance backend, and we reduced the time for updates, improving database abilities for very large instances. Now, all these improvements will make a big impact, and we look forward to hear your feedback on this. But I'm now going to talk about the Nexo platform. So Nexo Hub offers a wide range of functionality. 
Our strategy is to partner with other vendors and app developers, building an integrated ecosystem of applications. We've had a strong ecosystem for many years, including with partners like Corabora, as you saw earlier on stage, and we are always working to expand this further. We do this in part by making it easy for other applications to interact with Nextcloud and making it easy to build new Nextcloud native applications. The key to this is OCS. The Open Collaboration Services API is a powerful application programming interface that makes it possible for an external application to talk to the Nextcloud server. Now, to make this as easy as possible for developers, we offer a number of software development kits. But of course, many other languages beyond those shown here are supported. Now, we have also built an OCS Viewer app. Now, in this app, you can very easily experiment with our APIs. So you can browse the API, you can try out a request against your server that the app is running on with some parameters, you see the results, and then you can grab the code in pretty much any language you want to get that result. So beyond building apps that interact with Nextcloud, with the Open Collaboration Services API, you can of course build your own new native Nextcloud apps. And those two can be built in nearly any language you want. You're not limited to PHP, the core language of Nextcloud. Apps run in a microservices architecture, and we use a Docker-based deployment system to make installing and running apps at scale easy and secure. Now, where are we today? There are over 400 apps in our ecosystem today. These include open source apps such as Mattermost, Moodle, Big Blue Button, and Open Project, as well as web services like Colorboard, WebEx, Notion, Miro, many more. Now, if you're an organization, public sector or, or private, and you're looking to transition to open source and digitally sovereign technologies from us and our partners, this can of course take time. So until then, we of course still have to operate in a world dominated by no monopolies like that of Microsoft, and we feature a number of integrations with their closed ecosystem. Today, we are welcoming some new members to our ecosystem of apps and integrations. So, as we already mentioned, we have Dovecot from OpenExchange bringing a powerful and very popular mail server to Nextcloud. We also have Mailvelop, encrypting your emails using the widely used PGP standard. And third, but not least, we have Stalwart, an up-and-coming mail server solution. But I have something new today. I'm incredibly excited to introduce a new partner to the stage. So Clayma, he's going to talk about the integrations with Nextcloud Hub. Thank you, Yoss. So before we move forward to our integration within Nextcloud Hub, let me present first who we are. XWiki is a French and independent company created in 2004 with about 65 employees all across Europe. At our core, we are a software editor building two open source solutions, XWiki and CryptPad. Over the past few years, we have been getting closer with Nextcloud, in particular by working in joint projects. Today, Nextcloud, XWiki, and CryptPad are particularly present in OpenDesk. Having Nextcloud as a platform gives a great opportunity to provide IT departments with an entry point when it comes to collaborative applications. We also both believe in the value that integration can bring to open source software, in particular in the field of collaboration. For us, integration reduces your dependence on a single vendor, allowing you to pick the best solution for your problem. Now, I want to emphasize that a huge benefit of having an ecosystem with multiple well-integrated applications gives you, as a customer, the choice and the freedom. Ultimately, it protects your digital sovereignty, something that is a huge issue in the public sector right now. So, by essence, Nextcloud and XWiki have been built to be extensible solutions, which makes it fairly easy to integrate. And today, for XWiki and CryptPad, we have integration available with Nextcloud. So let's look at them. XWiki is a knowledge management platform based on the concept of wikis. It's a platform that quickly adapts to your knowledge and a great alternative to Atlas and Confluence. We have an XWiki app in Nextcloud, which allows to connect your Nextcloud instance to XWiki and access the pages. You can also use the Nextcloud search to search within XWiki content. We provide a second product, CryptPad, CryptPad puts privacy in business class. It is a zero-knowledge collaboration platform. CryptPad provides a highly secure, encrypted collaboration sessions. Multiple users can work on real-time on Office documents, diagrams, or Kanban boards, 
without having to worry that the server can see what is happening. As part of our work to integrate CryptPad within Nextcloud Hub, we provide a CryptPad app, which enables Nextcloud files to be securely edited through CryptPad. We support many kinds of documents in CryptPad, like the diagrams that you can see here. We have also built this extension in Nextcloud Hub as part of the project OpenDesk, led by the German Zendis. So if you're interested in using XWiki or CryptPad in Nextcloud, uh, don't hesitate. The two applications are already available today on the Nextcloud App Store. And if you want more information about these two applications, don't hesitate to contact us at Nextcloud or XWiki on these two email addresses. And we also have dedicated websites if you want to contribute to them. So I would like to invite Eos back to the stage. So I talked about the hundreds of apps in our ecosystem. Users can find and install them through our app store. There's one built into Nextcloud. We also have a web store front. And this one got a nice facelift earlier this year. Our team continues to look at ways to enable and empower our developer ecosystem. And today, I'm really happy to announce a new feature in our store to help app authors earn a living with their applications. So first, we introduce a number of options to donate. App developers can choose some of these or all of them, and it's of course entirely optional. But donations are great. We do believe in a subscription-based model. It's as a better way to build open source products. So we want to work with app developers and integration developers to offer solutions for enterprise organizations, again, public or private sector. Together, we can make our ecosystem stronger and offer better solutions for customers. So please reach out to us if you want to collaborate with us to offer solutions. Now, to help developers promote their apps and what they can do, we have a feature that lets them share information with their users about new improvements to their apps. And we offer our Discover section in our App Store, which helps administrators find new Nextcloud apps to install and try out. Now, we've made many more improvements in the App Store, like improving the search and the ordering of apps, allowing maintainers to give information about the status of their apps, and much more. Of course, we invite all of you to build new apps or help improve existing ones. In the coming days at the conference, you can find workshops that teach you how to build an app or how to improve your app, and you're yeah, super much invited to join and get involved here. And if you're not at the conference, I know some people couldn't make it, you can find tutorials on our website and check out nexo.com slash developer for links to these tutorials. So I want to close. Now Nextcloud right now is a fantastic platform to build on or to interact with. And with this release, we welcome new partners to our ecosystem. Of course, we worked hard to make it even more welcoming to new app developers as well. And we really can't wait to see what you all come up with. So now I'd like to ask Frank back to the stage. So I now have the pleasure to talk about, uh, talk about the last big improvement we are announcing today. And for me, this is a really big one. So this is Nextcloud Flow. Nextcloud Flow is a complete new workflow engine. It really enables us to automate all kinds of boring processes. I mean, this is interesting for organizations, for governments, even for home users, because it's quite powerful and very, very easy to use. The principle is, of course, very obvious and very easy. Uh, Nextcloud provides all the different functionalities from real-time collaboration to document management to notifications, tables, AI, and lots of other things. And Nextcloud Flow sits in the middle, connects all of that together, and yeah, makes it like super powerful and very easy to use. As I said, useful for a lot of people, but really today I want to look at it through the lens of the public sector, because as I said earlier, the government is an area who really needs this kind of automation to really move forward. And I think the public sector has some unique challenges. So the first challenge is of course, um, digitalization in the first place. So I talk a little bit about Germany here. So because I'm from Germany and Germany, we have some specific challenges. Digitalization is really lagging behind. A lot of government processes are done by pen and paper, fax machines basically in a lot of cases still. So digitalization of the government is a big challenge. Then of course, then the question is, how do we do this? Can we do this in a way that it actually provides digital sovereignty? So the government is actually in control of what's going on protecting the citizens and yeah, basically have a system that's really sustainable. 
next challenge. Then, of course, there's the question about resilience, right? Does the whole system still work if, like, I don't know, we rely on a cloud system from the other side of the planet, which suddenly goes down, or there's some undersea cable-like cut from whatever because of a war or something you don't really know right nowadays. So resilience is really, really important. So can the government have digital resilience for the services they provide? And then last but not least, the question is, of course, is there a way to create like a real digital government? Right? This is not only important because it's like convenient, it makes everything faster and better. It also has to do with like being more lean, being more yeah, um, forward looking. And if you really have like trouble, like hiring um, great people, then I, of course, IT should help to create like a digital government that works for everybody and is like just cheaper, faster, better, more transparent. And this is, of course, the real goal. In Germany, we have a specific law that I want to talk about for a second. It has this very funny German word uh, name, Online Zugangsgesetz. Right? <laughs> it basically means that the government is forced to provide all the services the government provides to the citizens in a digital way. It basically says it's no longer acceptable that people need to go in there or sending faxes or letters or something, but it really should do all of that in a digital way. This is the online Zugangsgesetz. And this is a law that put into place a while ago, and it's basically in the in process of being executed. Unfortunately, this all goes really, really slow and needs to be um, sped up and becomes faster. And the other thing that's interesting is that actually in the law, there's a mandate that all of that should be done with uh, open source. And the interesting thing is that all these initiatives that exist already to, uh, to do this, none of them is really completely open source, like really from the full, from back to bottom, from the platform until the, the process itself. So there is no real solution for that at the moment. And this is, was also a big motivation from us as Nextcloud. Okay, like we have the tools, we have the capabilities, let's build this and provide this platform where it's like super easy to automate these processes in a complete open source way. There's another interesting um, principle in Germany, and this is the so-called uh, Einer für alle EFA Prinzip. Um, it basically means that if one organization like a city implemented like a Fachverfahren, a process already, then this should also be usable by another city, right? You share with each other. And I personally find it very interesting and funny because this is exactly the open source principle, right? This is exactly what, how the open source community works, exactly how, uh, the, how Nextcloud, for example, is built. We are collaborating, we're sharing with each other, and so this is how we all get together stronger. So, of course, this is another example which says, okay, this all should be done with open source. Okay, but what means done now? Um, it's, it's actually not so hard. Um, there's always a way where some requests coming in, something happens, someone, I don't know, someone wanted to register dog or wants to do something else with the government, then the data needs to be stored in a central way, it needs to be processed, um, like checked and approved. And at some point, then there's a confirmation sent out and then the process is basically done. And this is quite um, simple, actually. Um, and we at Nextcloud are really happy because we have all the, all the pieces already in place. Right? We have all the file management, we have all the communication capabilities, we have the office document uh, management capabilities. We have everything already in place. It's just not automated yet. And this is why we built and extended the OCS API, the Open Collaboration Services API, to become like a standard where all these different things, these backend activities I talk about in a second, can be scripted and automated and put together. Again, an open standard with an open source implementation for open source business processes for fun. So this is what we're building here as a standard. And of course, the version 1.0 is uh, available as part of this release. So let's, let's look into this a little bit more detailed. Um, we checked all the different processes and we checked what is needed there to do this. And it's just standard things like file management, sending, receiving emails, processing emails, extracting attachments and so on, payment processes, um, archiving, um, approval processes and so on. And we built like APIs and implementations for all of them as part of OCS. So. With a very, very simple script, you can basically put all those different things together and you can model such a process to, again, to register your dog maybe. But this is very easy, scriptable, with just a few lines of code for everybody. But we wanted to uh, uh, take another step and make this like even better and even easier. So we put a no-code and low-code platform on top of that. 
So you can actually do all of those things now in a graphical way. You note we have to write a script. You can really do this in a graphical way with a mouse in the web browser and model these processes. And this becomes then now super, super easy. So let me show you how this looks. Um, this is just an example. It usually always starts with some kind of event. Something comes in. Again, someone wants to have, I don't know, apply for a new passport or something. And then some kind of process is going through, something happens, and then something is maybe called um, stored in Nextcloud tables and then approved later. So it's quite a standard flow chart, basically, that you can model here in a graphical way. And of course, the backend of all these actions are all the Nextcloud functionalities you already know and use every day. For example, Nextcloud Mail. Obviously, Nextcloud Mail is very good with receiving, <laughs> sending emails and managing emails. So we build an API that is all can be automated and scriptable. So we can receive mails, we can pass mails, we can check the signatures, we can generate a mail a response and so on. So this all can be very automated and very easy. Another example is forms. So Nextcloud Forms is an application where you can build all kinds of forms and you can put in data and then we extended it now that the data that is su submitted with such a form um, can be stored directly in Nextcloud tables for further processing. And we also extend the Nextcloud forms that a form that is generated is embeddable in other web pages. So for example, if you're a city and you want to make it possible that on the ci uh, city website, you, I don't know, you register to some event or apply for a childcare, kindergarten place or something, then this can be done via form from Nextcloud forms directly on the website of the city in a very easy way. Then, of course, there's Nextcloud tables. We heard all about it like earlier, a super powerful use, a tool to um, handle structured data. We extended it in a way that you can import and export these, these schemas and share it with others. That's what I said earlier. This is required by the law. So it's basically possible that one organization is modeling some management tool for something um, and then shares it with others. And this is super easy possible. And this is why we build this on top of Nextcloud tables. Then there's the Nextcloud Assistant. This is our AI tool, which is also something that can be used as part of such a process, for example, for checking the plausibility of some data. You can automatically check if what is submitted by someone looks like, I don't know, spam or is wrongly filled out a form or, or some other mistakes, and automatically you can check and process it with AI systems, and this is also deeply integrated. Then earlier we heard from, uh, from Michael and the Office section that we can now generate Office documents and PDFs in an automatic way with templating and filling out forms. This is done in a graphical way, as we saw earlier. But the, one of the main reasons why we built this feature in the first place is because we also want to do this in an automatic way. So this is all now scriptable, and you can generate, like, um, I don't know, answer PDFs and how to pass other PDFs and really handle this automatically, also including signing of them. So this all sounds all great, but a little bit like abstract maybe. So let's go through some concrete examples. So the first example we picked is if you want to deregister de -register a company. This is one of those standard processes that the government provides. And um, second example is you want to apply for a childcare place, a kindergarten. And the third example is something that every organization um, maybe wants to have is like approval of share links or something like that. Because remember, Nextcloud Flow is a full automation pro, um, platform. It is useful for the government, as I said, but it's also useful for all kinds of other organizations. This is the example of the third, the third point here. Okay, so let's get started. Maybe um, you want to deregister de your, your company and the process um, is that you need to send a PDF that you filled in um, all your data by mail to the government. Then we can do this now. We can automatically receive this kind of mails. We can pass them. We can extract the attachment, the PDF, and pass the PDF and put everything that's in the PDF then in Nextcloud tables, for example, that we have the data in an in a abstract way. Um, and then let's look at like Nextcloud flow. It looks like that. You, the data comes in. It's like passed and put into a table row, maybe. Then maybe part of the process is some kind of payment. Maybe this process costs you 10 euros, or I don't know. Then we can automatically generate like a payment link. We can put it into an email, send it back to the citizen, so they can then do the payment. And once the payment is done, um, the, the next process or the same process depends, starts, um, and it goes through some different steps, maybe also manual approval steps, right? Not everything can be automatic. Maybe also a human should look at it, does this, and it then deregister the company um, from the registry because that's the process. 
and then it generates maybe a confirmation PDF, which is then sent back. So this is like fully automated and like really super nice and powerful. And this really saves so much time, has a very nice digital interface to the citizen, don't have to go in, don't have to look for an appointment and so on. And it's also completely open source. Second example is um, if you want to apply for a kindergarten place, um, maybe in this case, it's not by mail, still sending mails is fine. It doesn't feel to me like fully digital, but in this case, maybe um, you use a form. Maybe this is a form on the website, as I described earlier, with Nextcloud forms. Of course, this also supports um, normal API calls. So if you want to have a mobile app where you can do that, it's totally possible. It's just a different um, input here. And then the third example, a lot of people can relate to that, that you automate some kind of other processes, your vacation process in your organization, or in this case, the approval of a share link. And this is, of course, also very easily possible and scripted and really adapted to the needs of your organization. Okay, so let me show you how this works um, in reality now. And here's a nice video. Life is busy and you expect quick, easy and seamless interactions when ordering services or products. Some companies make this supremely easy, others still lag behind. Similarly, in some countries, public services are widely available online, even through mobile apps, while other countries still have serious work to do to lower the barrier for citizens to work with them. Nextcloud Flow is designed to help organizations improve their services, bringing processes online. Nextcloud Flow does this by automating a variety of interactions between your organization and external users like mail communication, document generation, payment processing, managing approvals, and much more. Flow offers a graphical automation tool, integrating various Nextcloud Hub components and data with external processing systems, able to input, process, and output data in a variety of ways. Data can come in through a mailbox, uploaded files, data in the Nextcloud Tables app, or other sources like the standardized Open Collaboration Services API. Flow then activates predefined flows to process the data. For instance, it can automate processes like vacation requests. Based on submitted forms, Nextcloud Flow can populate tables with data, track approvals, and then notify the employees about positive decisions. You can make everyday communications easier. For example, requesting and receiving management approvals for public file shares, and so much more. Flow will run multiple processes after each other on an incoming document or execute actions in parallel. It can ask a human to proceed to a next step or interact with an external system, providing a very flexible and powerful automation system. The various available flows are visible from the app's dashboard, where the admin can see which are activated and the state of each. Nextcloud Flow provides powerful custom automation tools while offering an intuitive experience, even for less technical users. It's not only key to digitalization efforts in the public sector, but also excels in automating business processes and enhancing customer interactions within enterprise environments. Naturally, it's integrated into Nextcloud Hub, the most secure self-hosted collaboration platform, making it easy for organizations to get started with. Okay, as you can see, this is all super easy and very powerful. And this makes like Nextcloud Flow um, a platform for full end-to-end -end digitalization, which is very important for our government and also for lots of organ other organizations. And I'm personally really, really proud what the Nextcloud team built here over several months. And we have this full solution now that is available today. But of course, I'm really happy that we're not doing this alone. We're doing this together with the government, with government organizations. So we have support from lots of important person, people and organizations. For example, here is a quote from Dr. Markus Richter. He is the CIO of Germany, responsible for digitalization. He's really happy that with the collaboration services we provide for the first time a 100% open source solution that is really helpful for the government. And this also is what the law requires. Okay, to summarize it, this is a super powerful, easy to use solution. I'm really happy that it's um, deeply integrated and available today to empower everybody here, to make all our lives easier and more productive. And I'm also very happy that it's built in a way that is shareable between organizations. 
because this is something that makes it really, really powerful. So Nextcloud Flow, really happy that we can finally reveal this um, project that we were working on for many, many months. This leads me now to the, to the summary of our presentation, of our big announcement today. I'm really personally really blown away what the Nextcloud community, what Nextcloud team built um, over the last months. I think this is a really, really step, a huge step forward. Nextcloud Hub 9 is for sure our biggest release so far. It really has a lot of improvements all over the place from security to performance, functionality, and lots and lots of small polishing things. So I think it's a really, really big step forward. Let's go through it uh, one last time. For example, the new design, from my perspective, a really, really huge improvement. It makes everything more polished and also uh, reduces the white space in between. It makes everything easier to read and to follow, and it's just clean in every way. So this is really, really good. Next improvement is the out of file filters. This is something that you see on top of the files app. It makes just finding your documents and working with them a lot easier because you can filter by file type or by time or who shared it with you. For me personally, really, really useful to find um, documents where I don't know where they are. Um, then there's the folder tree. This is one of the most requested features uh, ever in the history of Nextcloud. It took us a while to implement it, but now we have it. I think it's a really good thing, especially if you have deep folder structures. Um, this is very, very useful. Then the file request feature is very useful um, for business purposes, but also in the private uh, world, right? We can, in the business world, you can imagine, hey, can you please send me this presentation or this document? Or maybe in personal, in the private world, you want to ask, hey, can you send me this, your photos from the wedding from last weekend or something? So this is a really nice feature, very, very cool implemented in my perspective. Then we have the download notifications. Again, very useful. Just imagine you send out a sharing link to someone and immediately if the person clicks on the link, you want to have just a push notification on your phone, you know, okay, the person actually looked at the invoice that you sent or something else you shared. Very useful. Then uh, our mobile apps were greatly enhanced. So we have now two-way syncing. So you can really sync in both directions. That also was something that we worked on for a long, long time. It's really working now and really done. Then uh, the big performance improvements um, that we did. Nextcloud is, is getting faster with every release, which is really good. And this release specifically, we improved the performance and it's noticeable for small instances, but also for very, very big scalable instances. But of course, there's still more. Uh, there's the federated video call, which is just for me personally, from a strategic level, very, very good because it really helps us to move in the federated, less decentralized world what I showed you at the very beginning of the presentation. So this is a very cool feature. You can really call people on other instances, but again, this can fine tune from a permission perspective. So you have to not have to worry about spam or something. It's, it's all good. Uh, then the mail filtering is very good and innovative. The important thing is that the filtering happens on the server, right? You have the filtered mails also show up in a filtered way on your mobile device and other clients you might use. And this is just a web interface to work on those filters. This is how it should be. Um, then uh, we have our new partnerships with Dovecut and Stalwart. Um, for a long time, people ask us, um, hey, um, why don't you develop a mail server? Uh, from my perspective, it doesn't make sense to develop a mail server because there are already awesome, great open source mail servers out there. So for us, it was logical to pick um, the two leading ones, in my opinion. And these are the ones we support. And these are the ones we recommend to everybody. And we also have our commercial partnerships with them, obviously. Um, then we have a phishing mail detection. So nowadays you got get a lot of phishing mails, unfortunately. We have a very intelligent um, um, system now in place that helps you to detect these phishing mails. Um, then a very cool feature, my perspective, using our AI um, assistant is that we identify in mails if they require a follow-up. And we automatically put them into a follow-up question. A section that you can easily find them again. So I don't know about you, but for me this happens sometimes that I'm reading a mail, yeah, 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 and I didn't really got that someone is waiting for me or that something is missing and this is then automatically detected and I see, ah, here is still an answer for me, is still missing. So that's a very cool feature. Then, of course, the AI assistant overall is greatly improved um, from the backend, makes it more scalable using the GPU, you can use clusters, remote servers, integration with other systems and so on. The web interface, the, the front end was greatly enhanced and also with new features like the new chat interface. So this is something that is really, and that took another very big step forward. 
Denn äh, in äh, Nextcloud Office, uh, that we do together with Collabra, there are huge performance improvements, so it's really a lot faster working with big documents, as Michael showed you earlier. We really notice it, and it makes it really a lot better. Um, of course, with the innovative feature that we also use Nextcloud Flow, with uh, generating and filling forms in Office document and PDFs. Um, very, very nice, powerful tool. And last but not least, Nextcloud Whiteboard. Again, something that was requested for a long time. We still have partnerships with other whiteboards, but um, there was really the request to us, hey, let's have something 100% open source, 100% open um, on-premise, 100% integrated, collaborative, nice permission system, everything you expect. And that's what we have now with Nextcloud Whiteboard, which is a very cool feature. It works like standalone, but of course also very useful collaboratively in, in video calls. So these are the core features of Nextcloud Hub 9. But um, as I said earlier, we have two other special topics that we covered today. First is the Nextcloud platform. For me personally, this is very, very important because some people think that we at Nextcloud, we really want to do everything on our own and that we only do it partly right? with a nice whiteboard now, but we are, see ourselves as a platform. So we see ourselves as someone who is working with everybody, obviously, preferably uh, with open source products and, and, and projects. So we're really happy that in this release, we pushed the platform forward. We have improvements in the App Store, as Josh said. We have new partnerships. XWiki, for example, was here in the stage, one of our closest partners and friends. And there are many, many more, and there are also many, many more coming. So this is a really a strategic thing to bring everybody together and make this like a nice experience for our users. And then the last improvement is, of course, Nextcloud Flow, our new automation system, which is very innovative. Um, and it's really easy to use, right? You can script it with a script or you can do it in a graphical way with this no code, uh, low code way. So a really innovative way, especially for the government for digitalization. All of that is available today. Um, we at Nextcloud are not big fans of pre-announcements. So everything we show you is actually real and exists today. You can go to our website and download and use it today. I cannot wait to hear the feedback of you. So Nextcloud Hub 9 is a real complete platform where you can regain control over uh, your data. I'm really proud what we built here, what the team built here, this the community, everybody together over the years. But at the end of the day, it's not so important what I think. It's more important what our users and our customers and partners think. And I want to show you some testimonials um, in some short videos from our customers. My name is Andreas Klotz and I manage the local HIFIS cloud cluster at uh, Helmholtz Centrum Berlin. And uh, I probably have to expand a bit on that. So Helmholtz Association is the biggest research organization in Germany. We have 18 research centers uh, all across Germany with uh, up to 40,000 employees. And uh, HIFIS is uh, a, a platform which is tasked with providing digital services for science and we do that by providing federated services to them. Um, we have the HIFIS backbone cluster, they do networking and uh, federated identity and we have the uh, HIFIS software cluster, they do uh, research software engineering education, so educating uh, scientists on how to program and program in a sustainable way. And then there's the HIFIS software cluster where I'm working at and we are tasked with uh, providing the Helmholtz Cloud, which is a platform where Helmholtz centers can provide their services, which they already have in operation, to other Helmholtz centers. What factors influence your decision to choose Nextcloud as your content collaboration platform over other solutions? As for HIFIS, actually, we just looked around in Helmholtz and noticed there's Nextcloud everywhere. We already had uh, eight running, at, at least eight running instances that I know of, of Nextcloud within Helmholtz. So uh, our task was basically to just find them and bring them together. And I cannot really speak for the centers themselves and how, how the decision was made, but I reckon it has lots of to do with uh, the very strong open source commitment by Nextcloud and uh, how, how much we can be in control of our own data by using Nextcloud. What tangible benefits or positive changes have you experienced within your organization since the implementation of Nextcloud? 
So with Nextcloud, collaboration for researchers has become really intuitive. So you always know if, if you want to collaborate with some, somebody, you just send them a Nextcloud link and they know their way around already. And um, we also feel that uh, we are much more in control of our data. And uh, the, like with, with all the conferences, scientific conferences and so on, um, we just uh, know that wherever we go, we have our data with us, being, be, it, be it with uh, sync clients or uh, in the web, uh, accessing it via Wi-Fi or a mobile network. Um, and it's still at a secure place. Are there any specific features or functionalities of Nextcloud that align particularly well with your organization's needs or priorities? Especially for HIFUS, that would absolutely be the federation features. So we we love the federated login possibility. I'm able to use my HZB credentials to log in at the other Nextcloud instances, for example. And uh, even more importantly, the open cloud mesh uh, capabilities. So being able to share between Nextcloud instances is very important for us. Können Sie sich und Ihre Organisation kurz vorstellen? Mein Name ist Sven Thomsen, ich bin CIO des Landes Schleswig-Holstein und bin verantwortlich für die IT oder die Digitalisierung in der Landesverwaltung. Wir sind also eine klassische Landesverwaltung, bestehend aus Ministerien und einzelnen Bereichen, die unterhalb der Ministerien arbeiten, machen also im Prinzip Ministeriumsarbeit, das Erzeugen von Texten, Dokumenten, das ist was wir tun. Wir sind knapp 40.000 Nutzerinnen und Nutzer auf knapp 25.000 Arbeitsplätzen, immer mehr tatsächlich auch ausschließlich auf Laptops und Mobil unterwegs. Welche konkreten Vorteile oder positiven Veränderungen haben Sie in Schleswig-Holstein seit der Einführung von Nextcloud festgestellt? Wir merken, dass sich die Zusammenarbeit und das gemeinsame Arbeiten an Dokumenten komplett geändert hat. Es ist eben nicht mehr einfach das Versenden von Dateien ähm, und dann eben das Rückholen von Dateien, wo dann eine arme Seele dann entsprechend zusammensitzt und verschiedene Dateiversionen so zusammenführen man, dass es wieder ein konsistenter Stand ist, sondern wir arbeiten gemeinsam an zentral vorgehaltenen Informationen und regeln nur noch den Zugriff darauf. Das ist das, was sich jetzt in der Arbeit wesentlich ändert und eine der wesentlichen Funktionen ist, die Nextcloud tatsächlich auch für uns bereitstellt. Was sind Ihre zukünftigen Pläne oder Bestrebungen, um die Nutzung von Nextcloud in Schleswig-Holstein zu erweitern? Wir sehen, dass wir in zwei Szenarien, glaube ich, jetzt einfach Traktion gewinnen. Das eine ist beim Ablösen von alten Infrastrukturen. Die klassischen Gruppenlaufwerke, Gruppenablagen, Abteilungs- oder Referatsserver, die genutzt wurden, um einfach Zusammenarbeit zu organisieren, die können komplett wegfallen. Und wir können quasi alles das, was mit ich gehe mit Dateien und Informationen um in klassischen Bürokontext, das können wir auf Nextcloud ablösen und auch zentralisieren. Das heißt, da fällt auch ein viel großer Teil noch von bestehender Restinfrastruktur weg. Das Zweite ist, dass wir sehen, dass wir einfache datenbasierte Zusammenarbeitsszenarien tatsächlich auch neu denken können. Ich hatte eben das Thema Versenden von Tabellen gedacht, der Zwischenschritt gesagt. Der Zwischenschritt ist ja relativ simpel, dass wir in die Richtung gehen, dass wir eine Tabelle zentral bereitstellen. Aber eigentlich wollen wir auch das nicht, sondern wir wollen an den Daten arbeiten. Und ich glaube, dass mit Nextcloud Tables als Beispiel wir durchaus in den Punkt kommen, dass wir auch klassische Fachverfahren, ein Begriff, den es nur in der öffentlichen Verwaltung offensichtlich gibt, damit ablösen können, indem wir uns einfach überlegen, dass wir die Datenstrukturen in Nextcloud auch hinterlegen. Okay, so I'm really happy that we have so many happy users of Nextcloud. Um, and, but our, at the end of the day, of course, this is all the achievement of our community. So Nextcloud is a community project. We have thousands of volunteers working together here. And of course, here we are at the Nextcloud conference here and the, the key event of the year to bring everybody together. And I'm really happy that we are, have this such an awesome community producing such great software in a super friendly way. And I can't wait to spend the week together. And um, a big, big thanks a lot. Also, a thanks a lot to everybody in the company, of course, everybody who's building it as a job, but also everybody who is using it, everybody who is promoting it. So I'm really happy that we are such a big, nice community family here. 
Thanks a lot for um, listening to this presentation. I wish you a lot of fun with Nextcloud and a lot of fun at the Nextcloud conference. Thank you.